Thank you, Jay. Like, uh, like you said, my name is Hannah Garfield. So thank you for being with us today for the Q&A for the film Nowhere at the 29th Woods Hole Film Festival. The festival runs from now through midnight on August 3rd. We just decided to extend the screenings for a couple of days. Um, before we begin, we would like to thank all of the festival supporters and sponsors. Tonight's film sponsor is the Law Office of Ferre Ferreira and Vasquez. This festival is made possible by the assistance and support of many people, and we hope that we will be able to count on you going forward as we continue to develop the virtual screening platform. A couple of housekeeping items. All films are eligible to receive both an audience and jury award. You can vote for the audience awards for the feature films in the platform. On the home image of each film, you'll see five stars next to the box that says watch later. That's where you vote. One for the lowest, five for the highest, and I'm sure this film's getting all fives. Uh, during today's Q&A, which will last around 45 minutes, I will be speaking with the filmmakers for a bit, and then we will open it up to questions from the audience. Please write your questions in the Q&A section, like Jay said. Um, I'll be watching for that, so if don't worry if I don't answer your question right away. I'll make sure to be checking and get to it. All right, without further ado, why don't we have all of our attendees uh, introduce themselves and say um, how they were involved with the film and where they are joining us from tonight. Do we start with Francisco? I'm Francisco Salazar. And I'm David Salazar. We're, we're the co-directors and we're in from New York. Perfect. Let's go over to Juan. Uh, unmute yourself. He you can't hear us, I don't think. Oh. Um. Oh, there he goes. Okay, hello, my name is Juan Pablo Casilanco. I play Sebastian in Nowhere. I'm coming from the middle of nowhere right now. I am in Colombia, but I'm in a country house with my family in the middle of the mountain. So it's a pleasure to be here. I really have to say that I would love to be in Woods Hole, but in this case, technology connects us in the best way possible. So thank you for having me and having us. Well, thank you for joining us from the middle of nowhere. All right, let's head over to Natalie. There okay. you go. Hello, there we go. Um, I'm Natalie Rangel, and I play Stephanie in Nowhere, and I'm in Bogota, Colombia. Awesome. And then finally, we have Miguel, who just jo who joined us. Oh, you're muted. There you go. Everyone, um, my name is Miguel Gonzalez. I'm Adrian in Nowhere, and I'm so happy to be here to finally premiere. Maybe you can see a little bit of this typical Bogotanian sunset in my back. <laughs> that looks like a beautiful view out there. I thought it was fake for a moment, but that that's beautiful. I'm happy you can share the view with me right now. And I, I've got involved, you asked me, uh, when we, you asked us when we were involved with the movie, yeah, I've got involved in this film like two years ago, and I'm so excited to finally have it on, on cinema as like uh, available for the audience. Awesome. Well, I guess my, I guess we'll go right into the question. So my first question is probably uh, for our directors over here. What drew, what inspired you to tell this story and kind of how did you, did you write the script yourselves? How did you kind of get involved with making this film? So uh, 2016 was when we started writing the screenplay. Um, we, we went through many iterations. We knew that we wanted to tell an, an LGBTQ film story. Uh, again, we started at a very different point. Eventually, uh, we were both doing grad school at the time, and we had some conversations about situations that a lot of our colleagues were having in terms of immigration. And so we thought maybe we could bring those two themes together. Uh, and as we conversed more and more with people, we discovered, I mean, we basically discovered what we wanted to do with the story and, and we went from there. Mm -hmm. So it's really, so it's kind of been a four year journey from, I kind yeah. of starting your concept in 2016 to premiering it here in 2020. Yeah, we, we filmed it at the end of 20, in the second half of 2017. And then we started, and then we did some reshoots in 2018. Our post-production uh, was, went into 2019, and then we had a bit of a delay, and then we finally got it into the, started the festival circuit. So it's been a, it's been a four-year process to, to finish the film. Mm. But we're really glad to have it now. It's four, four years well spent. 
Um, so for our actors over here, kind of what made you, so they kind of talked about, you know, how they, why, why they started the film, what made you guys want to kind of be part of it in, as actors? Well, uh, I remember that I received a call from a friend um, who told me they were looking for a Colombian actor, and for Colombian actors actually, for, for the film. And then I met the, the Salazar brothers and I had this audition and I don't know, I finally I decided to, to, to go film with them. And I really enjoyed the, um, to be part of it uh, since the beginning and I really wanted to, to be part of the film too. Okay. Natalie or Juan? Okay, here I go. <laughs> well, for me, the experience was amazing. And, and of course, to, to have the opportunity to be in this kind of festival that's from, you know, Boston. Uh, because, you know, the experience that I had, it was thanks to a friend of mine that he said, you know, they're going to make a casting and they need an actress that can speak very well English. And I was like, oh, okay. And then when they sent like, okay, you have to, when I, when I sent the casting, they said, you have to talk a little bit about immigration. So it was like, the best um, opportunity that I could have because I was an immigrant in the United States. Um, I lived in Boston, so this whole story kind of connected me and gave me the opportunity to, to you know, act also in English and to show also that other part that, that belongs to me. That's, you know, the United States as that country that I lived when I was a small girl and being an immigrant so it was like I had a click like this when they when they told me like you know that my casting had to be like that, telling that kind of story, and while meeting the Salazar brothers and the amazing team, it was also a huge experience and an amazing opportunity. And then when we found out that we were going to be in the Woods Hole Film Festival, so it was like yay Boston, and yeah. it's really exciting to have this opportunity as my as my partner say, and as my director say, you know, we wished we could be there. We could have had the opportunity to be there, but it's also a great experience, you know, to be here and to share this amazing and wonderful film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Juan? Yeah. And yeah, I got involved in this project thanks to our uh, incredible um, casting director, Consuelo Gacha. She invited me to do the casting and when I met um, our directors, it was an incredible experience because they were so honest. They also tell us a story without uh, stereotypes. And uh, that, that was uh, one of the favorite themes uh, to me to work with them. I al also have to say that uh, this opportunity gave me the, the opportunity <laughs> to do a lot of things for the first time in my life because this is my first feature film. Uh, it's also my first time acting in English and was my... Oh. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a big, big uh, gift uh, that my directors and the life give uh, <laughs> to me. And I learned a lot. I learned of my partners, partners in scene. I learned a lot of my directors and uh, also all the people uh, involved in this project. Well, congratulations, you did a great job in the film. I never would have guessed that it was all these first watching it. Um, so we have our first question from the audience. Um, they say, thank you for making this wonderful film. Watching it, I wondered a lot about the couple's backstory, how long they had been together, why they moved to New York, etc. Why did you decide not to focus more on kind of the backstory? Well, uh, I mean, we, we, we try to sprinkle in as much of it as we could within the story and without, within the uh, conversations that happened, but we really kind of wanted to make the film uh, kind of focus on the, the moment that they were living in and really kind of move forward and kind of uh, drive with the uh, momentum of the story of the urgency of what they needed to do. I think that if we would have taken more time to focus on, on other things and expand on that, maybe the story doesn't have the same kind of narrative drive that we were looking for. Awesome. Um, so when I was watching the film, I really, I always like to kind of t look a lot about what themes are coming out of a film. And I think you have some really, you're dealing with some very big subjects and you have a lot of great themes in the film. What were some of the ones that were the most important? What were some of the story themes and issues that were most important to you to talk about in the film? And um, how did you kind of 
help, you know, when you're writing the script and you're directing, what were some of the things you were doing to help make sure those themes and issues got across? Well, I think for sure one of the things is, you know, as Juan Pablo said, we wanted to get away from any types of stereotypes that we generally see in Latin America. For example, the immigration um, issue, we wanted to show that these immigrants were, were came here as legal. They didn't come illegally. Uh, they were students. Um, this is how we, what, how we grew up, who, what we saw as, um, as Latin Americans who first born, uh, first generation Latin Americans here in America. Um, also with the LGBT topic, we also wanted to get away from any type of stereotype that we've seen in Latin American uh, cinema or Latin American um, uh, television. And I think that that was something that we would wanted to, to do. Yeah, and also I think essential, oh, go ahead, Miguel. No, I, I completely agree with um, Fran. And yes, it, it's really important what Juan Paulo says about the stereotypes because um, how to be a gay and a Latino immigrant in the U.S. and actually how is to have the opportunity to be educated and to have this legal situation in a country a different uh, or, or like different or far from your hometown. So I think one of the one of the first things that make me be uh, like willing to to start from this movie was to to understand that. I can be like a Latino immigrant, but not being a, not being a Latino macho, like this typical uh, cliche of being Latino. And uh, I also can play uh, sports, being good in sports, being good in the university, and just tell a story about love. Because it's, it doesn't matter if it is, if it is between two guys or uh, two women or... <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's just a love story and we wanted to tell it in the best way possible, uh, possible and I, I think we, we make it, we, we accomplish that. Mm. I wanted to say that, um, oh, go ahead Juan Pablo, please. Yeah, I can agree uh, of that, that um, one of the most important things in, in this film is that Miguel said that uh, it's, uh, it's just a love story and a good thing about it is that anyone can feel, feel identified with this story. That's it. It's not a story with stereotypes. It's not a story about two boys. It's just a love story. And also, I can agree that uh, it's good because uh, to be part of it because we represent the people in, in the Latino community who is fighting to stay in the U.S. Um, I just wanted to add one thing. One of the things central to the story was um, Adrian's fear uh, and how he manages that. And actually, um, I mean, that's at the core of the conflict between the two of them. He doesn't know how he wants to manage. He's so used to being in control of his life and about a situation and hiding. And then suddenly everything goes out of control and he doesn't know how to handle it. And he's afraid of having to confront who he is with the people that he loves the most. And so, I mean, for me, for us, we were talking about the script, I think, at the end of the story. And comes to terms with, with who he is um, by confronting that fear. And that was, that was really, in many ways, the core of the, the, the narrative thread that we wanted to explore. Yeah. Uh, I, oh. yes, because because I, before this, this Q&A, I was thinking exactly the same. Like how this, this guy who used to have everything in control you need to experiment how hard it is to manage the like the immigration services. This this is stuff about the visas in the US, being a student, being a professional, and that's something that he can have in control. And so I I, I, I agree with 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 my director in that subject. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I also I think it's important to say that I would also say that nowhere is like freedom. It's, it's the meaning of, it's, it's a love story, but it's also showing a story of a human being that is free to the world. So it's like, it's a love story, but it also shows that why do I need to have papers to live in another country? Or why are these, why is, are there so many conflicts? I just want to be free. I just want to be a human being that can travel around the world, that can study anywhere, 
and I want, I want to fall in love and I want to be happy. So I think nowhere also shows like we're from nowhere, actually, you know, we're, we're part, we're, we are all part of the world. And, and that's the importance also to show that, you know, not only the Latino community, but also, you know, human being, you know, that we want to be free, that we want to live, that we want to love and we want to study and we want to be professionals, but, you know, have that freedom. I think that's also the importance where I found that importance of the film in the film. And I think that's what nowhere has. We're from nowhere. Well said. I think that's yeah, no, that's perfect. That's really well said. And really, I think more you talked about, the more I'm like, oh yeah, that, that's true. That's great. Like I totally agree with everything she's saying here. Um, and I liked how you were bringing, um, you guys were bringing up the point where, you know, on the surface, it seems like the main issue is going to be, you know, immigration and that's going to be the main problem facing them. But in reality, it becomes a lot more, a lot deeper with these issues of family and self-acceptance. And I really loved, you know, get delving into the film and delving into these characters as they wrestle with these big issues. So well done. Um, let's, uh, so and the next thing I want to talk about is the relationship between Sebastian and Adrian. And I really think, I think you guys did such a great job of making this relationship feels so real realistic so how what was that experience like with you know from the director's point of view like how was it in casting what made these two the perfect people to play the characters and for uh, Miguel and Juan Pablo what how did you guys feel embodying these characters so, uh, I'll, I'll talk to the casting part and then I'll let Juan Pablo and Miguel talk um, so, from what, so the casting process took place in Colombia and my brother was there and he would send me tapes here and there about, uh, of, of all the people that we had seen. And to uh, be clear, I was coordinating the Colombian part of this, the shoot and he was in the US coordinating the New York stuff. So we kind of split up, then we came together to do the actual principal photography. But, and um, when, when Dave sent me the tape of, of Juan Paulo, I said, this guy has something. He has He's very authentic. He seems very authentic. And then when he sent me the tape, tape for Miguel, I, 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 I was like, he was, he was perfect. He was just, he it was him. It was, it was, he, he was, was Adrian. He was Adrian. I, immediately, I, I, we knew that. And then it was just, and then we just went to rehearsal process, and then that was really how it really took it from there. Yeah. I, I think I, I really was looking to create a real incredible character. You know? Yeah, sometimes you, you're on stage, you're on the set, and, and you find this, this mix between your, your previous preparation and all the things that the directors and all the actors are giving to you. So uh, it was a lot of learning in this movie. So I really enjoyed that, uh, to be studying, working at the same time, working a lot with our DF. That's something I really enjoyed, like working so close to him, understanding better how to work in front of a camera. And in that way, like Jose was awesome to that. And we used that uh, relationship in order to uh, have a better um, managing of the character because we, we can understand how, how Adrian can just build his, his character, how we can create together the character using the light, for example. And the thing I, I always think about Adrian was he, he was clearly spoiled. I really like Bogotanian typical spoiled guy who has everything in control, he has access to everything. And as you know, like Latin America is, it's huge and deeper in this. Or being in Argentina or being in Colombia. Actually, I'm, I'm on top of a mountain right now, kind of a top of a mountain, and that I'm so far from the Caribbean. So I'm not this typical uh, Latin who always says dancing and uh, just <laughs> going to the sea and sailing and whatever. No, I'm in a mountain. So everything here is different and so conservative. And I need to understand that in order to show that to different audiences because Latin America is huge. You can, you can find the difference between a German and a French guy, but why don't you understand the difference between a Mexican, a Chilean, and a Brazilian guy? Yeah, because they are completely different. Yeah, it's, it's another story. And you know, it's really different to be from Bogota or from being to, I don't know, the, the North Coast. It's completely, completely different. So I was thinking about that in my character and how to show to the US and to the world 
this kind of difference about being Latino, like relating this with, with this uh, subject we we speak before about the the cliché, you know, about the stereotypes. But I, I want to <laughs> let Juan Paulo talk to. So I think it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, uh, I want to talk about our relationship and. Well, I have to say that Miguel and I, we are really, uh, uh, we are really different, but uh, the best part of it is that we find uh, or we found a code to work together. Uh, I think that I, I learned a lot uh, of him. Um, I think that this even helped me to create my character because uh, Sebastian is a guy uh, who is in contradiction between being with the one that he loves or follow his dreams. Um, uh, I think that uh, all this process, process and rehearsals and uh, everything uh, gave us the opportunity to uh, learn uh, a lot uh, about uh, each other. And this is also part of our characters. So uh, yeah, I, I, I can say again that this is just a big experience and uh, at the end of the day, we we ju we just create a, a a real relationship in the film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think that works uh, at the end of, of the film. I think I think Adrian, it's the the thing I learned at the end is like Adrian is is losing the one he loved because of his lack of empathy. Hmm? He, he wants to be a control freak of everything, and obviously he couldn't. But he's losing his loved one because of that, I think. So uh, what's a really great experience, actually. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was fun working with both of them, I have to add. Um, you know, both of them were, we were very open to dialogue. It was, it was, we were just constantly creating the characters on set, working together. It was very open dialogue. It was, it was, it was a really great experience. We shot for, what was it like? We shot 34 days. 34 days in all, um, you know, and every day we just came to set and everyone was ready to dialogue about what the characters were. It was, it was a very fluid experience. Hmm. And I want to head over and talk a little bit with Natalie too about your character because I think she is such a great, she ends up being such a great sounding board, I think, especially in the film. Um, what was it like, you know, how, I'm trying to formulate the question in my head. <laughs> Uh, we kind of talked about what drew you to wanting work on the film, but what about your character did you really love and did like and what kind of drew you to wanting to be play this role? Well, I did. I did actually love it. And I think I was that, you know, that person that was in the middle in between these two people that were, you know, struggling with loads of stuff. And she was like, you know, this this fun, this nice, this, this person that could say like, hey guys, I think you should do this. And actually, you know, like um, Sebastian, they come with this idea, you know, to why don't you marry um, Stephanie? Why don't you go there? And she's like, I love you guys and I adore you. And I think that's a conflict that Stephanie has because it's like, why can't they be here? I mean, why do we need to go through all this whole process of you know trying to marry someone so they could live here so it's also that kind of conflict like she loves them she adores them and and she just wants them to be happy and to and to live like you know their their life how they want to live it so it, it she kinds of struggles with that a little bit trying to you know to to try to find a solution but she's like okay i'm not gonna marry you that's not the solution like you have to find something else but i think offset and onset I was always Stephanie because it was always, you know, trying to, to like, yeah, let's have fun. You know, I'm the cool one. I'm going to be the one like, okay, guys, let's just get together. So it was an amazing experience because it was kind of like, you know, family. You get really into the character, character, you know, that kind of, of, of woman that, you know, that, that, make, that settles everything down and makes everything kind of peaceful and helpful. So she's, she's kind of that. Stephanie is kind of that person. I just want to add one thing about uh, uh, Natalie's casting. She was originally set to do another role in the film and then one day before the original actress quit and the first day of, of, uh, of shooting, uh, we got we gave Natalie the role of Stephanie and she was and she learned the whole the whole part in one day. Oh wow. I didn't know that story. <laughs> 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 you want to elaborate on your experience with that, Natalie? 
Yeah, really yeah, have no, it. I a role like, one day. Well, yeah, it was like uh, one day when they called me, I was going to be, um, I remember the name Marissa or something like that. And I was like, okay, you know, yeah. like, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do it because I love the story and I really wanted to be in the film. And then they called me like one day before, like, hey, um, the actress just quit. So we need you to be Stephanie. Can, can you do it? And I was like, yeah, I just got the script and I learned it, everything. And then I remember when I had a scene with Miguel, you know, it was our first scene. And he was like, okay, um, so can we rehearse? And I was like, yeah, do it, let's just do it. And just, you know, I got really into Stephanie. And also it's, you know, it's really, you know, you think a lot when, when you have a really good partner, when you have really good partners, because that works a whole lot better. You know, when you have like, we've just met that day, but the connection and, you know, the discipline and when you're into your character, it's like everything just works really, really good. So, you know, it's, it's, as an actress, you know, you always are thankful when you have a really good team, a really good director, and also really good partners, because it helps, you know, the story to give life to that story. I mean, even though you can be friends outside or not, but inside, you know, when you're on set, it's like you feel that energy and that you're connected. And I felt Stephanie. And when I, when I was with Miguel and with Juan Pablo, it was amazing because it was like as if we, we've known each other for a long time. You know, we were the characters. So it's like, I only said like, it's meant to be. Stephanie was meant to be, um, to be in my life, to be part of my life. And um, I don't regret it. And I'm so thankful and happy for that. And I'm like, yeah. And I they were like, you're so happy. Like, yeah. Absolutely, but it, all the characters were meant to be somehow. And I, I remember the, the first day we, we shoot together. And I remember Natalie was all the time just ready. She, she's that kind of actress uh, of an actor right? who, who are always ready. She's ready to play all the time. And when I said to her, should, you, should we rehearse a little bit? And she was, yes, of course. And we started to play and play and make a take, retake or whatever. And we, I, I really enjoyed that moment. And I, I can say like in this moment that it's one of the most like uh, enjoyable uh, scenes I, I ever like, I shoot because it was really nice to, to share that time with Nathan. And I want to say that that was the best thing that could happen to the film, <laughs> because and Natalie is so talented, but she's also a kind person, love her. And I can say that she's one of my best friends uh, after the film and in the film. <laughs> so yeah, I think that she, uh, gave us a lot of his talent and experience and good energy to do this film uh, a really good uh, result well all three of you are so talented you guys should all be very proud you guys did a great job on this film so and i, I still am in shock that you only had one day to rehearse that's crazy um i guess kind of next i want to talk a little bit about post-production and editing because I think what I another thing that I noticed and really enjoyed about the film was kind of how you guys paced it where you would have these really sweet moments between Adrian and Sebastian and then like they be these nice cute uh, little clips and then you'd have these longer scenes where like the more serious things were being drawn out and I just I think going back and forth between the two of them made it such a dynamic film um, was that a decision that you guys kind of made ahead of time or was that in the editing room or during post-production that you were making? Uh, I think there's a couple of MVPs in the post-production. Um, first of all, is Juan Soto, the editor. Um, he's actually in London. Oh, and, yeah. you know, this is a very international production. He actually edited most of the film in London. My brother was in London for a couple of days it at is. one point, And then the rest of it, we did over Skype uh, in real time. It was, it was a really unique experience. Uh, Juan was huge in deciding the pacing of this film. I mean, we we both came in with a very different idea of how we wanted the film paced. I think we actually wanted it to be a little bit longer in many respects. As direct and as, as, as forward driven as possible. And I mean, that's what he did. And I think he did an amazing job. Second person that I think is a huge MVP in post-production and really helped with the pacing is Andres Soto, our composer. Um, Andres did a lot of pushback on us. Uh, because we wanted a different kind of music. And he was like, I think we should do something a little bit more melodic, a little bit more emotional. Please give me the chance to do this for you guys. And you know, he was right. 
And then I think Diego Llama, who did the color, and Nicolas. And Nicolas, uh, oh my God. Bar 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 Barraya. Nicolas Barraya. Who did the sound design? design. Who did the sound design? I need to say something, and it's both uh, uh, Francisco and Pedro, both are like musicians, and they record music for the movie. Yeah, and that's awesome. Yeah, we, we recorded the score for the for the, for the film. Oh, the cool. film. That's so cool. Yeah. Multi talented. Yes. Well, <laughs> that's where we started actually with uh, our, our artistic journey. We started as musicians, and then we eventually transitioned into filmmaking. But but I think that the post production of this film really uh, the the team of the post production, the core of it, I think they really helped make the, the film what it is and I mean applause to the yeah people. I mean in our experience every single time we get into post productions is really scary because you go on to you do make this movie you go through all these days of shooting you think you've got amazing stuff and then you get to the post production at the beginning you're really scared because you're like what is this actually going to look like mm -hmm. and then you start seeing it and you start questioning everything and when you have amazing people post production that slowly start to build it up into something then you start to realize how amazing it is to collaborate with really great, um, you know, with other great collaborators like Juan, like Andres, like Nicolas, like Diego, who really, again, the film, the film, everyone, there's the cliche of the film being made three times. And really, when you come to the end, you see how these people did the post-production and how they brought it all together, all the work of everyone else. It's really exciting and, again, very fulfilling. Awesome. Well, I guess we have about... 10 minutes left so i want to talk about the ending of the film uh so when i i when i watch films and when i'm programming films i always look i think the ending can be such a make or break moment especially in my opinion i feel like there's been a lot of films where i'm like i love it and then the ending just doesn't work and i really love the ending in this film and i think i think it ended up fitting really well um so i'm curious to kind of hear about you know how did you kind of decide to end the film the way you did and or are you, what are, are you happy with it and what just kind of tell us talk a little bit about the ending i think it's, I think we, oh, all, well, it's like <laughs> but um we i remember we should like three different options for the for the for the many, ending. many yeah. different options for the ending we actually talked about it a lot with with miguel and with juan paulo and the what the final product is it's a reshoot of what we originally shot uh, because what we originally shot we edited in and we didn't really it didn't work it didn't work and then we went back and then we reshot it um, and then we talked about it with Miguel we talked about Juan Paulo and it was something of uh, uh, like it was an, a back and forth yeah, I mean, we talked about it with our editor too and we just I mean yeah we were literally writing the script on set <laughs> while we were reshooting the ending because I remember we, we wrote one script then we were like, we're gonna reshoot this thing. So we wrote another version of the ending. Then we discussed it with the actors literally moments before we were gonna reshoot it. We had a lot of discussion about how it should be. Then we're on set and Miguel is like, well, why don't we try this instead? And then we're with, we're just doing it. We're against time. It's very, we're shooting in front of a school during peak hour when, when this bus is coming by and cars coming by and we're like, we need to just make a decision here. And I think we just, we just rewrote it right in that moment and then when we took it to Juan, Juan was like, okay, let's play around and figure out what works. And yeah, I mean, it was literally the next day that Juan edited the ending after we reshot it. Yeah. So yeah, we were rewriting the ending all the way to the end of the, uh, to the end of the shoot. And, and then Andres kind of added to it with the music uh, to kind of help with some of the emotional building as well. Mm -hmm. I really appreciated being working with you guys. It was this possibility of uh, have these ideas and maybe say, what if we tried this final? And Francisco and David, I don't know if I like it, but let's shoot it. Let's shoot it and we will see if anything it, 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 will, it will fit. But I really enjoyed that part too, to be always like listening and yeah, and, and have this opportunity of propose and try and play and do this kind of stuff, yeah. I, actually, I can remember what the, was the, the, the final final. <laughs> 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 they haven't seen that final film. Oh my gosh, you guys haven't no. seen it? No, the, no because they can't the, see it from there. The, 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 the oh, film no. was originally supposed to come out in, in, in cinema by uh, the pandemic. Well, yeah. I guess I'll guess we'll keep it a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Juan Pablo, did you have something you wanted to add? 
face? Are you raising your I, hand? I'm mostly burnt. Yeah, I, I was. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. My Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, one thing that I want to agree is that the 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 thing that I love the most about the end of the film is is that it's something just about self self love, and also one of the things that I love uh, of the end of the film is that confirms one of my favorite quotes in in my life that is something like sometimes the place you are used to is not the place you belong you belong where you believe you belong and what's that for you so uh, I I said if you want to know more about this film and if you want to watch the end of the film you have to watch it in the Woods Hole Film Festival <laughs> Yeah. All right. I have, um, before I ask my last question, I just want to remind um, anybody watching this that you can, there's a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. So if you have any questions, you can type it in and I will ask our lovely panel, our lovely attendees here. Um, I guess my final question for you guys is what do you, what do you all hope that people take away from nowhere? What do you hope kind of lasts with them after they see the film? I hope that they I hope that they come away with an experience um, in which they they go on this journey with these characters and learn about um, you know love and and they consider what is love and how you know you know that we don't need to be afraid to be ourselves that we need to accept who we are and and that 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 that's the first step to loving to loving ourselves first and then we can really love others that we can really have those relationships that's for me again why i think adrian ultimately ends up where he ends up because he doesn't come to terms with that reality and i, and I hope that people can can take that away you know i think um you know watching the film i think i don't want anyone to have to live the experience of adrian i, I hope that you know we can come to a point um in our society where, as Natalie say, we could all be free and we can love whoever we want without having to think about who or what people will say, that we can live wherever we want uh, without having to think about getting the right papers, the right visas, the right anything. And I think that the most important thing is that we can all be happy and just love. Important, it's how, how we reframe the way we love because Adrian was really love blind and so intense and pushing a situation that it was uncontrollable. So um, yeah, I think we, we can think about the love and about the super, the, this capillary stuff about being Latino, being in love and maybe go a little bit more deeper and, and try to understand that we are really different because our age, because our hometown, even if we are like Latino people, like we are really different, but we can build in this like uh, cultural wellness a lot and we can give a lot to, to the United States and to the world. But I, I really enjoy that we are now listening and we, we can make this movie in order to, to improve that point of our people. Natalie or Juan Pablo? I think um, no one should miss nowhere because, you know, for example, nowadays we are living that kind of situation. We are living that kind of situation of racism, that kind of situation of, you know, trying to find ourselves as, as human beings. Um, and it's a story that tells us about love and, and, and how and who we are and what we want to do. and, and that, that freedom that we want to search and to keep going in for it. And I think Nowhere Today is like that kind of film that shows reality and, and that shows not only, you know, Latino community or that difference, it just shows these, these characters that are struggling with, with this world that, that human beings have given to us, you know, to, to stay with certain rules and to live how these certain people that are in the power want us to live. So it's it's that kind of story that which on which we can all identify and to show all this diversity as well in the cast because, you know, for example, in my character, I am Colombian, but I'm playing an American character. So it's like, it's also to show that we can do everything to also show to all the artists that, that that's our, 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 our thing is to tell stories, mm -hmm. to, to
about them or to have that desire to live those kind of stories. And yeah, freedom again, I will always say that don't miss nowhere because it shows, it shows you that part of we can live and we can try to find ourselves uh, that kind of freedom that we always dream of. Well said again. <laughs> yeah. And I will say to the audience that you don't have to miss nowhere because uh, you're going to learn a lot about everything, especially love. And the best way to love anyone else is to start loving yourself. So that's it. And I'm glad to be here with you. Yay, we're glad to have you. Um, we have one question from our audience. So what was the main challenge of filming and directing in Colombia, considering the country and most of the public is still very conservative? Um, I, I have an answer for that, because I think the challenge is not about the people of all conservative the people in Colombia, because we can find conservative people all around the world. So I think the challenges here in Colombia are mainly related to um, no, uh, how how you how you film in the streets, how you can manage the budget, how to. I think it's technical, technical maybe, and I I can see in Bogota a lot of this is one of the most liberal uh, capitals in Latin America, and it's one of the most liberal uh, capitals in Colombia. So I think that the about the challenge, I think the directors will give a, a really better answer, but I think it's not related to the conservative people because you know how, how our political is right now in the world and you can see how presidents in, in both countries who are really conservative in some stuff and how, how can that affect people in, all around the world, not just in Colombia, like uh, filming a movie, no? So I think it's not about I mean, for us, I think that we, I think the greatest challenge was actually getting started with production. When we went to, when I went to Colombia to start the pre-production, um, we only knew one person in the film industry over there. And she was our producer, Jimena. And then from there, we built the team. Once we built the team, everything started to just kind of move a little bit slowly. I mean, every production has challenges and ours obviously did and had many, but I think we were able to stick together with the team and we were able to overcome all of them or the ones that we needed to overcome to be able to make this project. And I mean, yeah, I don't think we really got into my, in terms of the conservative public, we, we really didn't experience that. A lot of people were just really open to, to being part of the film. The majority of the people, we, we, we had so many locations. I think that was probably the, the biggest challenge of the film because the fact we had so many places to shoot plus we had two different countries that we had to shoot in so i think that that to be very honest was, was probably the most difficult part about making the film yeah all right well we've we've reached our time i hope you guys have had fun just talking tonight i had a lot of fun um and i hope all our attendees enjoyed it as well uh the woods hole film festival is still going on you can watch films from now until if you miss the start at the beginning, we're extending a few days to August 3rd. So make sure you can watch Nowhere again if you want. Maybe watch it twice, maybe watch it three times. <laughs> and all the other films as well. So thank you for being with us tonight and enjoy movie watching. I one thing. Um, we, we, if you want to learn more about Nowhere, other projects we're doing, and uh, more information on you know, what's going on with the film, uh, we are on Facebook and on Instagram, La Puerta Productions. Uh, yeah. I completely forgot to, to, to ask you guys where people can keep following you. So thank you for adding that in. <laughs> yes, all course. right. Thank, thank you so much. Bye. Thank you for coming. It was good to see you all. Thank you so Bye, much. Guys.